Okay, so this question, slightly unusual diagnosis for U.S. simile. However, it's on the NBMEs, so it's not my opinion as to whether this is something you need to know. If it's on the NBME exams, it's the U.S. simile, and you need to know it, okay? So provide you a little value point here, bump you up a point or two. So we have this 20-year-old woman. She has one week history of fatigue. You can see her hemoglobin is low at 9.4 grams per deciliter, normal range, 12 to 17.5 in menstruating women, 13 to 17.5 in non-menstruating women and men. Hematocrit is low, 28.2%, normal range, 42% plus or minus 5 menstruating women, 47 plus or minus 5 in non-menstruating women and men. The hematocrit in percentage should be about three times as great as the hemoglobin in grams per deciliter, which it is here. It doesn't have to be for US milli. I'm just telling you how these variables relate in case you're curious. Erythrocyte RBC23 bisphosphoglycerate is elevated. You're probably like, what the fuck does that mean? Relax. Okay, I'll explain in a second. I know it's weird, uh, but this is just 2,3-BPG. Uh, it shifts the hemoglobin oxygen dissociation curve to the right. Our bilirubin total is increased to 8 milligrams per deciliter. Normally, it should be about 1. And indirect, is, which is unconjugated bilirubin, is increased at 6.7 milligrams per deciliter. The point of this ratio is just to illustrate that not only do we have a hyperbilirubinemia, but that it's predominantly unconjugated or indirect. Because when we consider etiologies of an unconjugated versus a conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, obviously very disparate, right? So indirect or unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia could be e.g. hemolysis, increased RBC turnover, can also be problems at the liver uh, in terms of uptake. Uh, UDP glucuronosal transferase is the uptake enzyme. In this case, not the answer, but uh, just that's something to bear in mind. Conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, classically uh, post-hepatic obstruction, okay? It can be common bile duct stone, cholelocalothiasis, can be head of pancreas cancer, uh, primary biliary cirrhosis, uh, primary sclerosis and cholangitis, et cetera, okay? We don't want to make this a long GI discussion, uh, talk about surgery and IM, okay? There's a lot to talk about, but I'm just going to stay focused here. We look at this blood smear. This is showing us echinocytes, E-C-H-I-N, okay? Echinocytes, which are slightly spiky RBCs, not as spiky as acanthocytes, Okay, acanthocytes, aka spur cells, are seen in liver failure, classically in heat stroke, also A beta lipoproteinemia. Echinocytes are seen in pyruvate kinase deficiency. Okay, so we have this woman who has low hemoglobin in combination with uh, an unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. It sounds like hemolysis in conjunction with the echinocytes, uh, pyruvate kinase deficiency. Okay. Now, pyruvate kinase is the last enzyme of glycolysis. It converts phosphoenyl pyruvate, which is our correct answer here, into pyruvate. That step, we are generating an ATP. ATP, obviously, going to upregulate sodium-potassium exchange pumps on the RBC membrane. So if we have decreased ATP, decreased export or uh, yeah, export of uh, sodium from the RBC. Sodium stays in the cell. Uh, water stays with sodium. Cell Cellular swelling followed by lysis, hemolysis, okay? So when we think of hemolysis secondary to enzyme deficiencies, G6PD, most common cause, X-linked recessive, and then we have pyruvate kinase deficiency, second most common cause of hemolysis secondary to an enzyme deficiency. Now, this is where things can get very fucking confusing very fucking fast, okay? I can make this a more extended biochemistry discussion. It's just a matter of how concise do I want to make this uh, uh, as far as this clip is concerned. I'll just try to give you some high-yield points here, okay? So acetyl-CoA carboxylase will convert acetyl-CoA into malonyl-CoA, which will in turn be a precursor to fatty acid synthesis. So acetyl-CoA carboxylase biotin, vitamin B7 dependent, and as I said, produces malonyl-CoA. Now, not only will malonyl-CoA go to fatty acid synthesis, but malonyl-CoA also shuts off fatty acid breakdown. It shuts off the carnitine shuttle when we're bringing fatty acids from the, from the cytosol into the mitochondrion for fatty acid breakdown, okay? That's acetyl-CoA carboxylase makes malonyl-CoA. That's just an important enzyme. We can talk a lot. I'm just 
giving you some punchlines here. Lactate, uh, you should know that obviously lactate dehydrogenase, it's interchangeable with pyruvate. That's relevant to the Cori cycle in that muscles are not able to produce glucose on their own. They lack glucose 6-phosphatase. So Cori cycle is where the muscle will utilize glucose, make pyruvate. Ultimately, it's going to convert it to lactate. And then lactate goes back to the liver. And then the liver can carry out the gluconeogenesis, converting that lactate back to pyruvate. And then pyruvate all the way up to glucose. Okay. Now, this is where it gets confusing. And we can have a long, in-depth discussion. When we talk about uh, gluconeogenesis, uh, pyruvate will go back to glucose via oxaloacetate. So pyruvate carboxylase via vitamin B7 will make oxaloacetate, literally a uh, substrate in the TCA cycle. Oxaloacetate via phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase goes back to phosphoenolpyruvate and glycolysis, and then phosphoenolpyruvate can go back to glucose. The reason we don't have pyruvate go directly back to PEP or phosphoenolpyruvate is because pyruvate kinase is an irreversible enzyme in glycolysis, okay? Uh, UDP glucuron also transferase, it's our uptake enzyme at the liver. So we can have a congenital deficiency, uh, a complete deficiency causing Krigler nausea, which will be a neonate who has a severe unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia with kernicterus. It can also be a slight deficiency giving Giel Bear, spelled Gilbert, that's very high yield for Yosemite. They'll give you a medical student who's stressed about exams and has occasional jaundice, there's no treatment necessary. Um, and also someone who's had surgery recently, that's how Giel Bear can present. They just get a little bit stressed and they have, uh, they have, well, they'll have a jaundice. So look, your take home point here without me making this a 27 minute clip is pyruvate kinase deficiency most is the second most common, uh, enz is the second most common cause of hemolysis due to an enzyme deficiency after G6PD deficiency. Okay. And Classically, echinocytes on a smear. And when we have hemolysis, we expect an unconjugated or indirect hyperbilirubinemia, okay? Obviously, a lot I'll chat about. This is just infusing you with a factoid. So if you liked this clip, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.